Let's learn more. Let's learn more. Let's learn more with liberty. The Dutch and the Swedish were the first Europeans to live in present-day New Jersey. From 1664 to 1702, New Jersey was divided into two parts, East and West Jersey, with each having their own constitution. In 1702, East and West Jersey joined to become one colony, but unfortunately the colony did not do well. So, the New York governor took control of New Jersey. In 1738, the New Jersey colony officially separated from New York, voting on its own governor. New Jersey had a warmer climate than most of the northern colonies. It also had rich land from which to grow crops, as well as thick forests where things like wood, iron, coal, and furs could be found and used. On December 18, 1787, New Jersey became the third state to join the United States. In 1681, William Penn founded the present-day state of Pennsylvania. King Charles II of England gave Penn 40,000 square miles to start a new colony, the purpose of which was to repay the debts owed to his father. Penn was a Quaker, and he dreamed of creating a safe place for other Quakers to live. Like the Mayflower Pilgrims, the Quakers in England were not free to practice their faith. So, William Penn offered people cheap land in Pennsylvania, and the population grew quickly. On December 12, 1787, Pennsylvania became the second state to join the United States. The year is 1733, and the area is the present-day state of Georgia. The Georgia colony was late to the colonial game, established nearly 50 years after the other 12 colonies. King George II gave General James Oglethorpe permission to start Georgia. Oglethorpe dreamed of starting a colony for people who needed help, a place where people could live who had been in prison for owing money, as well as the poor. Since the colony was created to help the poor, limits were put on the size of land that a person could own. At this time, the bordering state of South Carolina established large plantations, which caused extreme payment differences between the rich and the poor. The Georgia leaders did not want to see the same thing happen in their colony. At the beginning, and unlike the other colonies, slavery was not allowed in Georgia. James Oglethorpe hoped not allowing slavery would encourage more faith-based settlers to move to the area and stop the establishment of plantations. Over time, the colonists turned their anger towards the leadership so Georgia leaders then allowed the practice of owning slaves within the colony. On January 2nd, 1788, Georgia became the fourth state to join the United States of America.